you will find on your desk a sheet of paper. On this sheet, Robert Slodover was so kind to reproduce a text which I had brought this morning. And I thought it is better that you read it rather than that I read it again. It speaks about the meaning of mantra. The name of the composition mantra was clear fairly soon after I had thought about a composition for two pianos. So the entire structure of the piece was quite different when I started it in 1969. And the very first idea came in a car. We were four people in the car and the three others were talking about this and that. It was on a car ride in America between uh, Madison, Connecticut and Boston. And I heard this melody that I wrote on uh, an envelope that I had in my pocket. This melody has all the 12 different notes that one can, can find in an octave. When I was humming it, I tried to, to uh, complete, the longer it lasted, the more notes I found, to complete it in a way that I used all the 12 notes. Then, more than a year later, I threw away a piece for two pianos that I had uh, begun and I used this melody. I started working on it. I should add that during this car ride I immediately had a vision uh, quite different from previous ones. I imagined that melody stretched over a very long time span perhaps an hour, and that around each note the same melody would occur in a shorter time and each of the notes would be something like a sun with 11 planets around it or 12 planets around it. It has 13 notes. And then I could again, I thought, uh, compose around each of these individual notes another uh, 12 notes and derive from that something like a system of stars. I did this later on, but in order to be able to compose an entire world out of one thing, there must be variety. And then the mental work started. The first thing I did is that I gave to the different notes that you have just heard more precise durations which can be counted. And you will see later on the blackboard that the durations are organized as follows, as followed. The whole 
melody, which I then later called the mantra, the formula, has four limbs like a body. There's a first limb. It's separated from the second by a pause. There's a second limb, which is separated again by a pause. There's a third one, separated by a pause. And there's a fourth one, separated by a pause from what is to follow. And the first limb has four elements, four notes. Da di da da. Here they look already more complicated. And this I'm going to explain next. La da ba da di dum. Dum da 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 da. Di da da. You see, we have one, two, three, four. One, two notes repeated three times. So we have four, two. Then we have di da 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 da. One, two, three, four, five. One is repeated, and three. Ya da di. Four, two, five, three. Then the duration of the first four notes are all different. They are now. If we start counting, and the piece is entirely based on time that is, has a pulse, we have. Da di da da. One, two, three, four. As durations, and then we have la da di da di da, which means three times two, or six times one. We can say. The next one has da. Which means five, two, one, three, four. And then ta ta ti. Four, two, six. Which is proportionate to two, one, three. The overall duration now is ten, one plus two plus three plus four, six which is three times two or six times one, subdivided again into two, three, one. There is that little extra in order to make uh, it a little more subtle to have two, three, one within the six. And then five, two, one, three, four, adding to 15. And the last one's to 12, which is twi twice six. So they are corresponding, they are corresponding. This one feels already when one hears the piece. The, the mantra. So they are all different in duration, number, and now we should go a little bit further into the inner articulation of these uh, four limbs. To each of the melody I have added a mirror melody, which means the second limb is put in reverse in a mirror form together with the first limb. Da da di da di da, and then here da di da di da di. We have a mirror against the first limb, and the mirror is derived from the second limb, and the second limb itself is combined with the mirror of the first one. I'm going to play this now. So the simple mantra uh, is this. I do not play the uh, small notes which you see on the blackboard, just the individual notes. And then the second limb.
Now, the mirror of this form is, when I mirror the mantra, it is... So the mantra mirror would be... Exactly the, the, the steps, the intervals, what goes up, goes down, and then, and then, there is a crossing of voices, as we say. And if we do not want the crossing of the voices, then hear this. Um, for example, the green part in the second limb is... which is the same like... So and this one is combined with the second limb. Whereas now the first limb, what is on the blackboard in green, the upper part, is combined with that it is an artistic freedom, that not. because it would have hit on the same note. You see, in the upper part is... And it's pretty dull to... To, to, that, to, to do now this. You see. Because then I have... There you see. Then the piece would finish, would be finished though. <laughs> because it is, it is a consonant. So though it's better to make... Aha, it's still sharp. So I can continue. Well, there you are. So, lis listen, please. This is the combination of the first limb with the mirror of the second one. Then, the other one I played already is combined with... that chord too, but this I explain later. Now we have... It's written in blue, the third limb, the upper part. And I have combined it with the mirror of the fourth limb, which was... Now we have it. There it is. So please. And now I play the fourth limb, the upper part. And there we have the mirror of the third limb underneath. Where's the third limb? is combined then with the mirror of the fourth. The fourth one was... It's in brown here. And you hear it, the mirror? That's the mirror form. So, that would be the exact uh, mirror. We have now... In the piece, I can say this already, this combination of uh, a limb with the counterpart of another limb changes. One is combined with two here, and two with one. In others, there's one combined with three, or one with four, etc. Now, I would like to ask Romaniuk, Please be so kind and play now once 
what I am going to explain. The next one is, I had mentioned that this formula, the mantra, might uh, serve for a complete composition. And in order to achieve this, I need variety. The variety, I thought, should be already in the original mantra. And you will hear now that each note of the 13 notes has a different character. And each of these characters becomes determining for an entire section of the composition. The first note is a note with regular repetition and with the dynamics piano. Just this note. Yes. It is regular repetition. The second note is a note which has an accent at the end. Then the third note is a normal note. It, has, it is just a sound. Please. The next one has what we call uh, grace notes. Here are just four. That is the minimum that's needed in order to center a few fast notes, like a head of a being, around the center itself which is an E in this case. Please. Yes. Now play uh, seven notes, any notes, around the E in beginning. Well, just a moment, I do it. You see, if I have... It could be... I can play or... Uh, 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 it can be any cloud of notes around this nucleus. That's what I want you to understand, the potential of each of these characteristics. I cannot speak Polish yet, excuse me. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> we have to learn all these languages, I would say, with the European market now. The next note, one, two, three, four. The next note is coupled. Five and six are coupled together. And what they really are is a regular repetition of the pair is a, what we call a tremolo, a regular tremolo, only slow. Play it, please. Yes, the end is something special. I will explain that. But ya da di da di da, that could be da 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 that could be also uh, very, even much slower, or any interval. What is important is this, what we call tremolando, this tremolo. Then this was the fifth and sixth, but the sixth one also has its own character. And it is the following, the sixth note is always connected simultaneously with a chord. So please play this, and then this was the last chord. If you want to know what this chord is, is then in this chord are just these five notes vertical. Uh, I have explained before, so I can allow myself to uh, show you what the pitches are. These are the first two. And in the second one... So they together just sound like this. And that is this chord, which you just played.
So now we have the seventh note has an accent at the beginning. The eighth note, the eighth note, be careful. The eighth note is, is always connected with the previous one with all the intermediary chromatic notes. Please. So this is typical for the eighth note, that it is always connected with the previous note. You will see that this is not always the same interval. With all the notes in between, it's a, it's, it's a co continuous connection. It could also be a glissando if it were not a piano. And now we have the ninth note is always a staccato, always a short note. And forte, yes. The tenth note is always an irregular repetition here in its most simple possibility. We have duration of three plus four. And in the whole tempo, it is slow at the moment. Repetition, but irregular. There we had repetition, but regular. Mm -hmm. And then the next note which is uh, um, 11, 7, 8, 9, 10. The 11th note has, just a moment, it has the minimum of what we call a trill. That small uh, formula is the smallest possible formula of what we call a trill. Please. Yes. Make once a long trill with these two notes. Just that is what we call a trill. And the shortest possible one is a The next one is a, what we call a sforzato. It has a sharp attack and immediately a soft decay. This is a special kind of piano attack. Please. Aha. Uh -huh. He attacks it and then immediately he releases this and he, he pushes it down again, muted, without a new attack. Sforzato. And the last note is always uh, connected with any lower or higher note that is around through what we call an arpeggio, which means one or two or more hands full of notes <laughs> that, that go just in one direction or sometimes it's a little broken, but in general it goes in one direction and it ends into the note. That's it. Now please hear to the whole mantra and try to follow all the 13 characteristics. Play the whole thing. Follow the dynamics. All we need now is to imagine that each of the notes determines a, an entire section of a given composition or a region as I call it. In such a region we could have, for example, 13 times the mantra and each time in a different form. What could be different forms of this mantra? I have already mentioned before that, for example, in uh, combining limbs with each other in mirror forms, I find new varieties. 
this would be a, a variation technique to combine this with this and vice versa to combine this with this and vice versa there are other possibilities or I could say that the rhythm of this is used for the with, with the notes of this one and vice versa the rhythm of this could be used with any other section of notes etc and I will show you now the next state of the development of this composition I thought if I do not base this formula the mantra on a chromatic scale which is given by the piano where we have uh, 88 keys and each note has the same distance from the note below and from the note above as all the others but if I make myself now out of this given uh, scale new scales by leaving out for example certain notes then something very interesting happens to this mantra please Roger would you come and uh, play for example another scale I have written up a few scales all in all I have used 12 different scales this mantra is based on the chromatic scale. I have used all 12 possible steps within one octave. A, B, G sharp, E, F, D, G, E flat, D flat, C, B flat, G flat, and A. The 13th note is identical with the first one. So there are all the 12 different possible notes within one octave. And it has um, the most narrow sure. um, width. Now, if we use instead of a chromatic scale, the chromatic scale you all know, just play a little bit of the chromatic scale, but listen to the steps. Etc. They are all equal. Now play to the scale number two, which is slightly stretched. What does it mean stretched? I replace an octave. Play an octave please from A to A. Just play an octave. It sounds almost like the same note. But if within, if I replace this octave by another interval, let's say by a major ninth, then yes. And I say this is an octave now. This is an octave, then everything is slightly stretched. To give you an example, when as children we had, for example, rubber. There is a special kind of rubber and you make a drawing. You put the rubber on top, let's say on a face that you have drawn, and then you draw it in different directions. Then the face it comes like this or, or like that. <laughs> See? You can stretch it in all directions. And the same happens now to this mantra when I base it on a different scale of proportions and no longer on this uh, chromatic scale. Please play the scale number two. Now you have to be careful. This is now the scale number two, the second narrowest that I have used. Just for, go all the way through. which are major nights. So this is now our piano. The, the, the steps which are left out, well, we don't know them. I could make an entire piece just based on that scale. Then the mantra sounds as follows. Play mantra number two just without all the 
the characteristics, just the notes. Please play now this mantra, which is based, yes, there, from here on. So there are a few changes compared to the original mantra. It's slightly, we can say, distorted compared to the original one. Instead, for example, of which was the original, we have you hear that change? And the second one was in the second scale. It is which means it is slightly large. It's a minor second larger, the interval. And then we had in the original which has become, and then the, the original was, and here it is, it has remained the same. So there was no change, which means we have, through the change of a scale, uh, an expansion of the mantra. Now we make the scale still larger. Please play the, the next scale. On this scale, the mantra sounds as follows. Which means, instead of, we have now, and instead of, we have, and instead of, we have, and instead of, we have. And now we have the fourth scale, just to, to get, get you, give you a feeling of how the stretching works. Fourth scale, please. Number four. Uh, aha, yes, that's right. So I showed you the three smallest ones, and now we, we show one in the middle. We don't need to play all of them. Which has the middle uh, quality of expansion. Six, now six. Which means now the piano has got only three octaves and a little, little more, which are equaled to the original seven and a half. And the mantra played or transformed on this scale sounds as follows. Yes. That's it. You, you hear how it's stretched. And now uh, the scale number 11, it is, uh, do I have 10 too? Yeah. Well, play 10. You don't need
need to emphasize anymore, just... So as you hear, several intervals are within this scale. And I have done this on purpose because if I uh, uh, compose now a given formula within this scale, it is uh, expanded irregularly. It's not expanded proportionately, but it is distorted. And this is very interesting, very important. Please play number 10. You have it now, don't you? This one. Uh -huh, yes. Yes, play it a little uh, slower, please. Just a moment. You hear da 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 kiko how how wide this interval has become. And the second limb. Just a moment, just a moment. That's the third limb. Play the third again. No, no, chi ta ta tam ta That's it. And then now the fourth limb. So. I show you just the eleventh, uh, based on the eleventh scale. Play, play the eleventh scale, please. Then the mantra, just without the rest, mm -hmm. from here. Just a moment, please. Just a moment. Did you hear that? Da ba pi ba pi ba. It's enormously stretched now, almost over the entire piano. So this has become has become. And then this has become and then then has become right and then the end has become And finally, the largest expansion, which reaches over the entire uh, re r range of the piano, is the twelfth uh, expansion, please. The scale, first. And the mantra sounds... This is how I have derived from the original mantra, based on 12 different scales, uh, different expansions of the original form. 12 different expansions. 
The same is applied to time later on, to the duration of the mantra. But let's hear now first how these different forms of the mantra appear at the beginning of the piece. How all the uh, 13 forms appear. I have drawn the entire work in its formal uh, construction on this board and the black numbers which are in circles indicate durations. As you know now, the first mantra lasts itself 10 plus 6 makes 16 plus 15 makes 31 plus 12 makes 43 plus 1 makes 44 plus 4 48 plus 2 makes 50 plus 3 makes 53 time units and these 53 time units are indicated in these 53 so these 53 here are the mantra that we have been talking about up to now whenever there is now another number in a circle it means that the mantra is either doubled or quadrupled in time for example twice 53 makes 106 and four times 53 makes 212 half of 53 is the proc is 26.5 I have written 27 in order to get complete units half of this is 14 or uh, to be more precise 13.25 but in this case if, as I have taken 27 I say 14 units in order to get whole numbers the next one would be seven layers of seven and the smallest sh or the shortest mantra which is the most condensed compressed in time lasts approximately three time units <coughs> time units are to to be defined in a in another way I speak of time units, that doesn't mean that they, these are necessarily seconds or heartbeats, but time units to be defined. So, uh, the complete structure now, as you see, is like the tree, a tree of life, or like a tree of a family. You have the longest, which means also automatically the slowest mantras, twice here and here from these are uh, centered in the middle and before and after three times 106 from each of these 106 is derived a pair which is 53 53 53 and here's an exception which means I go already into the next layer, into the next generation. You will find out why this is the case, because the overall duration I have to take in account two. Two times 212, three times 106. Uh, then one, two, three, four, five times uh, 53. I want that the total durations of these sections approximate as much as possible. That's why here one is already becoming 27. So we have here the pair uh, correspondingly 53, 53 related to this center. 53, here 27, to this center. 53, 53 to this center. Now each of these 53 is again subdivided. As this was the beginning, we have here only one branch, the 27. Here, 27, 27, related to this 53. 27, 27, related to this 53. Then here, this 27, which has already gone in the next generation, has 14, and here, multiplication of 14. This I explain later. There are sometimes rows of 14th or 7th or 3 durations. This has a particular reason. I can explain it right away. If I would uh, use as many short as long mantras, the piece would become a very slow piece because 
the slow and long always eat up the short and uh, fast ones. Which means uh, if we have something that is very slow and lasts very long, it must be equaled by a lot of things that are fast and short in order to balance out the, the, the total time that has been occupied with the slow events. If one wants a balanced, a piece that is balanced out in its inner uh, rhythm, one should use more or less in total time um, uh, quantity um, as much fast things uh, in order to fill a certain amount of time or to, to make become alive a certain amount of time um, as much as one uh, fills with the slow uh, things. Therefore, uh, there is a logarithmic progression from the slow to the fast. The shortest, the number three, occurs uh, to such an extent that it fills almost as much total time as these two slow ones, slowest ones. I don't know exactly the number of the uh, mantras of duration three, but you can see that there are many. Um, 140 or something like this, I don't know exactly. No, no, that is exaggerated. It must be 100 and, 100 and something. Because all in all, we know uh, from another determination that it is 13 times the cycle. 13 times 12, which makes 156. So I just uh, show the uh, further de derivations of durations. From the 27, we have always derivations of a pair again, here of the 14. The other one is not there. 14, and here I jump already in the uh, generation of 3. Here, uh, 14. Then from the 27, 14 and 3. From the 27, 14, 14. Or here from the 14, we have the 7 in one branch. Here, another. 14 with the 7 combined and the 3. You see, the further we come to the shorter mantras, the more there is variety in com combining the total durations of 14, 7 and 3. From these 27, 14, 14, from these 27, 14, 14, from these ones, 14, and here we have the 7 related to the 27, and finally we come to the shortest durations of the mantras. What we can see here is that Sometimes a duration that I have just explained, or a mantra, is left completely alone, like in this case. It is even uh, no longer complete. One um, of its layers, each mantra, as you know, has two layers, the upper and the lower. A mantra with its mirror forms in different combinations. In some cases, I have le left out either the upper part completely or the lower part completely. And then I write here on the blackboard, mono, which means only one layer is there. And when the arrow is going downwards, then I have used only the lower part. When the arrow is going upwards, like here, then I have used only the upper part. Then it is a monodic music, just like a single melody without anything going with it, without counterpoint. So this is the simplest case. We have a 212 time, time units long mantra, and it is even mono, which means the lower section, lower part, is not there. We have one melody. This is one extreme. The other extreme is that uh, simultaneously with a longer mantra, several shorter ones are combined. And here we are. As I have many more shorter ones than longer ones, I must put them somewhere. So I put them into the longer ones, simultaneously. There we have sometimes a four-part counterpoint, because each mantra has two parts. And when we have another mantra on top, then we have four parts. For example, here it is the case. The first mantra is as it is. It is uh, without any combination with another one. The second mantra is already combined with a shorter one, seven and three. Then we have if you want to follow the order of the different mantras as they occur in the piece, you follow the green lines. Here are these lines with these small lines uh, going across. So this is then the definite reading order. The black lines indicate 
how I have them, them derived. But this is how they sound in the piece. So the third one here, the two times seven, um, is a multiplication, which means I have now groups of shorter ones. Let's say three times 14, one times 14, four times 14, two times 14. Then we have one times seven, five times seven, five times seven, then we have two times seven, and seven times seven, and three times seven. These are groups where I combine immediately one after another several mantras of the same speed, the same duration. Of three, for example, we have even larger groups. We have ten times three, three times three, two times three, six times three, one times three, fifteen times three. Is that all? Yes. Well, why these numbers? You'd know one, two, three, 6, 10, 15 are very important numbers in music and in general. The next one would be 21, 28, 36, 45, 54, 66 and 78. It is always adding uh, the next number. So 1 plus 2 makes 3. So if I have 1 plus 2 plus 3 makes 6, then I can permutate these 3 and it always makes 6. Then the next growing number is adding 4, makes 10. Adding 5 makes 15. Adding 6 makes 21. Adding 7 makes 28, etc. These are series of numbers with which one can work. So that there's nothing uh, astonishing in the fact that I have m groups of 3, which are 1 times 3, 2 times 3, 3 times 3, 6 times 3, 10 times 3, 15 times 3. And then the next one would have been 21 times 3, but I didn't use it. I didn't need it. Then there are individual threes, small, I have even more than the groupings, which are now added into other ones. For example, here we have one seven and one three mantra in the 27 one. In the 106, we have one of 27, one of 14, one of seven, and two of three. Then in the next 27, we have one of three, one of seven, one of three, etc. So sometimes there are many smaller mantras within here, within uh, a large one. Or here, this mantra is the extreme opposite to this one. This was mono, just with one melody. Whereas here we have the mantra and a mantra of 53 and a mantra of 27 and of 15 and of 7 and 2 of 3 simultaneous with this mantra of 212, which means there are several layers of speed superimposed. Now I come uh, to the next uh, character, characterization. Actually I'm coming back to the mantra itself. There are 12, uh, 13 characteristics we said given by the different notes. Regular repetition, accent at the end, normal note, Appoggiatura, or grace notes, around the center. Tremolo, etc. These characteristics now determine an entire section of the piece, which means 12 different mantras are each time determined by one characteristic. And we hear now the first large section of the piece, which goes up to here, where it says Roman numeral number two, there begins the second large region of the piece. And this then would be the first large region. And within the first large region, we have 12 different mantras, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Up to here, all the 
mantras have something in common. Further on, up to here, I have underlaid all the 12, 12 mantras, in addition to what I've explained, one very slow mantra, which has exactly uh, the characteristic of the first note. And this you are going to hear now. 